Hey guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome, horrific science teacher, you half sized human Jew. And in this video, we're going to talk about. Fossils are old people, like my parents, for example. My kids claim that I am a fossil, but they are, in fact, incorrect, because I am not yet old. Uh, I am mature, we'll say. Anyway, uh, fossils are remnants of living things that lived long ago, typically about 10,000 years, not always, but typically... 10,000 years or so in the past, and then going back up to millions and even billions of years ago, uh, or hundreds of millions of years ago, depending on who you ask. So fossils, why not earlier than 10,000 years? Why not like 5,000 years? And we do find some fossils that are younger than 10,000 years, but the fact is it takes time for things to fossilize. So the fossilization is a process, and typically that's about the cutoff, is about 10,000 years. So newer, younger than 10,000 years, it's not yet going to be a fossil. It's just going to be the leftover remains of the thing that lived. And then, you know, at longer than 10,000 years, it will be a fossil. Well, how is a fossil different than the leftover remains of the thing that lived? So when an animal comes along and he's minding his own business, walking along, and then bam, something steps on him and squishes him and he dies, uh, he, his body parts usually typically decay through different processes and just return to the earth and disintegrate. But sometimes parts, or very rarely, most of the animal is preserved in different ways. And little by little, those preserved parts change into rock. And when they become fully rock, that is when it is, an, is a fossil. So a fossil is rock. Uh, generally, sedimentary rock has fossils, whereas igneous and metamorphic, metasmorphic rock, uh, metamorphic, but it's more fun to say metasmorphic, don't have fossils in them because of the way that sedimentary rock forms. Uh, it forms with fossils in it very, very often. I have another video, by the way, about the different types of rocks, and you can go watch that video and learn all about what those kinds of rocks are. But uh, fossils are typically in sedimentary rock, and uh, there are different kinds of fossils. So the first type of fossil would be a, a petrified fossil. And this uh, petrification process occurs little by little. Over how much time? About 10,000 years, right? And uh, what happens is that the molecules in the living thing, well, now dead, once living thing, are slowly replaced by molecules of rock. Minerals that are in wherever the fossil is, wherever the dead thing is, uh, slowly come in and trade out the molecules of that of the bone and, and shell and whatever. And those molecules are released and rock replaces them. But because it's replacing the molecules, the rock ends up being in the exact same shape as the thing that died. So it leaves a perfect replica, like a statue of the thing that was once alive. So it isn't the actual living thing. It's like a statue of it that was created one molecule at a time by trading out the molecules that were originally there with molecules of rock. Another type of fossil that forms would be a mold or a cast, or a cast or a mold, because the cast forms first. So let's say a shell uh, it gets deposited on the beach and it makes an imprint in the sand. And then more layers of sand pile over the top 
and the time goes on and it gets you know more and more on top of it and it's just down there deeper and deeper and eventually that uh, shell disintegrates but the impression like a stamp that it made in the sand is still there and we call that a cast so the sand hardens and it's got the shape of the shell it's just like if I took the shell and I pushed it down into wet cement and I let the cement dry. Well, take the shell away because it would get stuck. But I take the shell away, I let the cement dry. I'm going to have a perfect cast of that's like a fossil of the shell. It's not the shell. It's just a cast of the shell because the shell imprint is there. A mold fossil would be the opposite of that. A mold fossil forms when, let's say I have a cast fossil of a shell and some sediment fills it up and hardens. Well, what am I going to get? I'm going to get an exact duplicate of the original shell because that cast was made by imprinting the shell and then the shell's gone and it's imprint hardened and then it filled in with sediment and the sediment now takes the shape of the original shell. So it's like the cast fossil becomes like a copy machine, like a duplicator making more mold fossils of the same shell over and over again and you could reuse that same cast fossil for that matter and make uh not that that would typically happen but you could make uh, multiple copies of the mold fossil of the same cast fossil so there uh, and then another type of fossil that occurs is a carbon film fossil and there these are living things have a lot of carbon in them all living things have a lot of carbon. We have a lot of carbon in us. When you die, most of the elements in your body are going to uh, they're going to go back into the environment. But the carbon is often left behind in just this thin layer of, in the shape of you, basically, where you left your carbon. So if I'm laying on the ground and I die there, then over you know a lot, several years. Uh, my body's going to decompose, but a lot of the carbon may get left behind in this thin layer on the rock. And if it, if the circumstances were right and that rock got covered up and preserved, you might get a just a thin layer of carbon that's just like a shadow of the living thing. That's just where the carbon of the thing fell. And uh, these are actually a very common type of fossil that we see. And then a very rare type of fossil that we almost never see, but sometimes do, is when a living, uh, well, a dead thing, a once living thing is preserved entirely. Doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it does, typically in ice, like in uh, a glacier, when a woolly mammoth gets trapped and frozen. And thousands of years later, an entire woolly mammoth, fur and guts and everything, still there, uh, it, it emerges, and we can see that preserved fossil uh, in all its glory and see what the animal actually looked like and maybe even get some uh, DNA samples from them. So you can find fossils in a lot of places. A fun place to find them is on the beach. You can find shark teeth. They are black, and if you just kind of walk along the beach and look for little tiny black shark teeth, you can often find them, and those teeth, we know they are howled, 10,000 years, right? Because it takes that long for them to fossilize. Uh, so those are shark, those aren't shark teeth from yesterday. Those are sharks that lived thousands and thousands and sometimes even millions of years ago, those shark teeth. Uh, you can find fossils in sedimentary rocks, wherever you have a lot of sedimentary rock, like, uh, I don't know, mountains and things around you if you know that the mountains are made out of sedimentary rock you're probably you have good odds of finding fossils there they're very common you can you can buy them in a lot of places because they are so common so and next time you look at a fossil you can say to yourself okay this looks like a thin layer it is a carbon film or this looks like an imprint it's a cast or mold or this is uh this is petrified wood it's uh, been the molecules have been replaced one molecule at a time and so you'll know all about the different types of 
fossils. They give us a record of the past. So scientists look at fossils to understand what life was like a long, long time ago. How do we do that? So if I look at a layer of rocks, I know that everything in that layer came from the same time period. So if I see leaves and some birds and some fossils of frogs or whatever, I, I can look at those and those are clues that tell me what the environment and that location was like at that time period. I can look at the layers of sedimentary rock like a time capsule and I can see what life was like in that area based on the fossils that are there. They give me clues about life in different places at different time periods. And I can see how the environment has changed over time. Maybe there was a forest and then it, for millions of years, and then that changed, and then there was a desert, and then that changed, and there was an ocean or whatever. I can see an historical log, a catalog, a, a history book of the things that lived in an area by examining the fossil record in that area. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your, uh, your science student. So sign up, subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones, you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted. And those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.